What's up, Mother Suckers? Welcome to another episode of Mother Sucker Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Blackson. I'm never alone. I'm always around with my Chinese best friend. Hey, thanks for listening to Mother Sucker Podcast. How's everything going? How's your week? Uh, everything's good. How's your week? Nah, good, man. Is that a stripper shirt you're wearing? Oh, yeah. I wanted to show my nipples. They're like like something out of um, Magic Mike, with a, like yeah. if he had a concussion. <laughs> it's like a ready to. Is it to silk or is it like rayon or is it like? Yeah, I, I got this at this uh, place called uh, Forever Twenty One. The fuck you doing shopping at Forever Twenty One for I, men? That was Forever Twenty One for men. Yeah, because I am Forever Twenty One. <laughs> What are you wearing, Michael Blackson? That uh, necklace you got there looks like very heavy. Mr. T is oh, going to be jealous. Nigga, let me tell you about this necklace. So, yeah, I didn't go buy no new jewelry, okay? Oh, really? Hey, that looks uh, brand new. My girl just left, and before she left, she said, hey, Mike, you have an old um, backpack I could use. Mm-hmm. So I know I got my old Gucci backpack in my guest room in a closet because I banned Gucci. Since, since the blackface, I'm done with Gucci. Yeah. I don't do Gucci at all. So, she went and grabbed. I said, yeah, I got the old backpack there. You know, mind you, I thought I lost this necklace two years ago. I thought wow. somebody stole it or was missing. So, she went in there, found the bag, and started emptying it out because I had a bunch of junk in the bag. And she said, hey, Mike, you got some jewelry in this bag? I'm like, <laughs> I thought I was, this was gone. Wow. So, it was this, and it was like some other shit was in the fucking, in the bag, man. In fact, you know what? What else you got there? It was like some fucking Michael Kors watch. I mean, mind you. Yeah. Mind you, I was broke a few years ago. So a few I used years to wear Michael, ago. I used to yeah, I used to wear Michael Kors watch. I just I just started wearing a Rolex like recently. So I had a Michael Kors watch. In fact, you could have this motherfucker. Oh, thanks, Mike. It's, yeah, take it. Man, I don't wear that shit no more. I made it in life. It looks like a Rolex. Yeah, it's it's Michael yeah. Kors edition of it's Rolex by Michael Kors. Rolex by Michael Blackson. So that's yours, man. Yeah, thanks. And you could, you know what? The necklace, I, I'll think about it. I might just end up, you know, giving it to you. Eventually. But uh, it looks very dangerous. If somebody snatched that off your neck, your whole neck's going to fall off. Right. It looks very heavy. No, it's not that heavy. It surely cost me, like, it didn't cost me much. I mean, gold is, gold went up since I bought it. But it, it didn't cost me much. If somebody, dude, don't need to snatch it. They just be like, hey, Mike, <laughs> give me your chain. I'm like, just hold the fuck up. <laughs> You take it off nicely. <laughs> no need to mark my nag. You could have this bitch. In fact, here's three more hundred dollars, <laughs> motherfucker. Okay, go get you lunch at uh, Mr. Charles or something. It looks like you joined the Tikashi Six Nine team with the colors you have yeah, right now. Fuck, I did not, man. The only just, missing is a rainbow hair. Yeah, this is uh, this is Giuseppe's shoes. A friend of mine's uh, made this jacket in Chicago. See, sometimes I'll buy some shit and I always have a fucking something to match it. Yeah. So I bought, I had this jacket in my closet, and then when I looked, I had a fucking shoes to go with it. I got something to go with every fucking thing, man. Yeah, absolutely. I, every time you have a, a shirt, you always have a shoes to match it. Yeah. yeah you're, you're the uh, fashion icon of the year, 2022. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We're going to nominate you. And you just dress like, you just don't. Uh, I like dress like Stevie a... Stevie Wonder pick yeah. your clothes, huh? <laughs> He's like, give me the green shirt and the black blue boots and the yellow red hat and a <laughs> Puerto Rican pants. Whatever my girlfriend uh, washed. Is it, what you wear. Yeah. So she, Did she wash your clothes like the night before you come out or like? She washes every day so I, I'm confused what to wear. Sometimes I'm like, didn't I just wear that yesterday? Cause oh you yeah, I just wash it. Brown shoes. You just, it's okay, Chinese best. Yeah. You stay. Yeah, nobody cares about me or what I look. And you lost like you lost some weight. Yeah, I and, lost some weight. And then you found it like a couple yeah. of hours later because you lost <laughs> yesterday. You were skinnier and then you found it again. Yeah, I did. Talking about losing weight, man. Let's bring our first guest to the show. Food. He's in the right. He, very good friend of mine. I met him actually with another good friend named David Steinberg. And we all actually was with Joe Biden way before he got elected. Oh, we wow. All with Joe Biden. And this guy's in the food business. Um, you can probably tell by looking at his size. What's his name, Michael Blackson? Mark Butcher. Give him a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Yes. Mark. Mark Butcher. What's Welcome up, to No Did Filter. Did I fuck up your last name? 
That's all right, Michael Black. Takes him. <laughs> it's a silent T, Mike, because there's no T. There's no Buker. T. Buker. Buker. I went Buker. to, listen, man, I went to Philadelphia Public School. That's who I blame this shit on. <laughs> I blame all my shit on Philadelphia Public School, okay? They taught me how to um, spell. You and the Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Well, shit, he fucking, he got just. He made it. He went to West Philly. I was in Southwest Philly. So oh, sure. really? There's West and South. There's West. There's Southwest. There's North. There's Northeast. Wow. Who's cooler? Yeah. I'm um, cooler. Man. What? Oh, really? You're saying Southwest Philly's cooler than? Oh, what West part of? Um, I think Southwest was more gang gangsters. I mean, I think like those. Um, uh, we had like our version of like BMF back in the day. You know, so Southwest was very, very dangerous. They have a street called King Sesson, but no fucking kings live on that fucking street. Okay, a bunch of <laughs> robbers, motherfucker. Okay, uh, but besides that, I mean, the thing about these tough cities, it make you tougher, get you ready for the streets, you know. But fuck all that shit. We talking about food, motherfucker. Yeah, we're hungry. This guy's in the, into the, you just, you got rid of your burger, you had a burger chain. I did. I had a burger chain. Lots of burgers. And what happened? And as I told you, I was a five-time world burger champion. And you're like, you look like you ate a lot of burgers. That's what time. I thought. He wow. told me he was a world Bullshit. champion. I thought he was like, you know how you do them hot dog co- contests? You yeah. eat a fucking hot dog. I thought you got all the fucking burgers. See, when food guys say you're like world champion or something, it means you cook the best. Yeah. When you say that to non-food guys, I think you've eaten the most. Exactly. <laughs> so I, uh, from DC. Yeah. Uh, now, question. Um, you know, how, so you have you always had interest in in food? No, actually, my, well, my mother was a lousy cook, so I had to learn how to cook, or I, or I look like you, you skinny motherfucker. If I didn't look, you know, if I didn't learn how to cook, I'd have, you know, I wouldn't yeah. be able to fit in my clothes. So seriously, is that how, is that I how you God. started cooking? Yeah. Wow. My mother wow. was a terrible cook, and uh, me and my sister had to survive, so we learned how to cook. Damn, wow, that's amazing. I yeah. mean, well, how bad was her cooking? What, she didn't season the soup? I thought all white put on seasoning that food. Was she, her, she just didn't season her shit at all? You know, we, she made one thing, which was like roast chicken, and we had it every night. Wow. Oh, God. So. It's like when I cook. Like, I'm, I make my kids green stew or red stew. It's like either tomato stew or the spinach stew. And I've been cooking that since I was a kid, way back in Africa. That's all I cook for them, the red or the green shit. Pick and choose, motherfucker. Well, hopefully your kids turn out like, like this young man here. Make what? some money at it. Like a cook, because oh, you're the worst nah, cook. Nah, nah, I'm not the fucking worst cook, man. But now, nah, go ahead, tell us, and... and so she just made the same fucking roast beef. Same, the same roast chicken. Roast chicken. One flies, one walks. The beef walks, the chicken flies. <laughs> so she made roast chicken every night, and we just had enough of it. So we, we went on strike. Damn. And my sister and I wow. learned how to cook. We learned how to cook by watching PBS, public broadcasting TV. So did you have to, I mean, but besides that, you still had to go to cooking class and all that shit. Right? I did. I went, to cooking, I went to culinary school, did that. Graduated college, decided I wanted to cook, went to culinary school, got good at it. And then decided that I really didn't want to work in restaurants, believe it or not. I worked in restaurants, but I didn't like going to work when all my buddies were coming home from work. Mm. You know, like they're all going out, right. rocking and rolling in the early yeah. 20s, and I'm like going to work. So that was only going to last so long, because you know me. So I decided I was going to own restaurants instead of work in restaurants. Wow. So you got rid of, now what made you get rid of burger? Is it more money? In, you, you went from burger to what? Steak. Steak. So is it because more money in steak? Um... No, it, it was because someone called me and said, I want to buy your company. Oh, otherwise, I would have, otherwise, I would have had it. I still would have had For it. Real? Did, yeah. So you get your offer, you're going to refuse? Yeah, and, and, and partners that I needed to get rid of. Okay, dope. But let me cut to the chase. All right, let me get to the point. Have you ever caught any of your employees sticking their dick in somebody's food because they pissed them <laughs> off? Just yours. <laughs> oh, really? I never ate there yet. So I'm probably <laughs> no, ate no, 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 not at my restaurant, but I've seen the videos. For real? Oh, what oh, oh yeah, no. There, there's videos of you know dudes doing stuff in mashed potatoes in restaurants. And oh my god. We goodness. don't serve mashed potatoes, but uh, you, they're, they're out there. Don't yeah. don't eat fucking mashed potatoes at restaurants. And potatoes. don't ever send your food back to the kitchen. Seriously? Yeah. Well, I mean, in my place, Mike it's always does but, that all the time. No, I don't. If I send it back, I don't even want it anymore. Seriously, I try not to. Your pancake. I used to date this one girl. This, she's get treat the waitress like shit and she sent her shit back I'm like alright they are gonna beat the dick pour breast milk in your shit you gonna get pregnant after you eat this fucking food okay? <laughs> well you know there, I had a famous French chef who was a friend of mine and very expensive restaurant in Washington like the most expensive restaurant in Washington where you make a reservation and they call you back Mr. Blackson we want to confirm your reservation for Saturday night 
any dietary restrictions, anything we need to know about? And they're like, no, we're cool. They get to the restaurant and the wife, true story. Wife gets a server and says, hey, look, I can't have anything with gluten, sugar, <laughs> dairy. <laughs> gluten, sugar, dairy. I prefer um, a vegan, grass-fed, plant-based meal. The fuck the bitch, a goat? Friend, yeah. server goes back to the kitchen, tells the chef, who is a 500-pound French chef, you hear him throw the dishes in the kitchen. What the fuck? Comes out to the guest and he goes, Madame, I just want to make sure. We called you to confirm your reservation. We asked you about any dietary restrictions. And you said you didn't have any. But tonight you've got flour, dairy, Whoa. butter. Oh, she also said no chocolate. He's like, Madame, you need to leave or I may, you may die here. And I actually <gasps> tossed her out of the restaurant. Whoa. Wow. That's crazy, man. So, but, but that's the thing, right? If you're going to go out to eat at a restaurant, you kind of need to prepare what they have and let them know. But don't go crazy. Because when you go crazy, mm -hmm. they're going to do some shit. So, I mean, being a, a, a cook, I mean, how is your wife a cook as well? Can she cook? Because, I mean, does she leave that responsibility to you? Then? Now that she know you know how to cook food, she like, fuck that shit. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm so, gonna go and Home Depot, motherfucker, you cook. <laughs> so here's the hard thing in my house. And I've seen your fridge. You don't have the same problem in this house. But in my house, <laughs> I live in a house of all women. I've got four daughters and a wife. And they all think they're expert cooks. Oh. And, the, and there's only one that can really cook well. But my wife isn't one of them. So <laughs> she may be cooking in the kitchen. And she, of course, can't stand it when I'm, like, in the kitchen. Because I'm looking down and, like, shaking my head. What? What? <laughs> what? Well, turn the heat up. No. I, what? I don't want burning it. How about put some salt in it? So when she's not looking, <laughs> me and my kids put salt and shit in her food she's cooking. So just so we can eat it. You're like the judge of Hell's Kitchen. Right, but just so we can eat her food so it's passable. It's terrible. And of course, now I'm going to get divorced after she hears this, but it's terrible. Yeah, I'm sure she won't hear this. It's only in this uh, broadcast. Yeah, it's in the hood. I she, radio. she won't listen to this. It's, yeah. it's only play. I'm moving in with you, and I'll cook here every night. Okay, you can move well, in. She throws my ass out. I have to, the, yeah. the, I have to stay in the room with all my old Gucci stuff in there. <laughs> that I've abandoned. But she's a terrible cook. My, some of my girls are For good real? cooks, but yeah, I, you know what? I, I stopped cooking at home. Why? So I've got, I've got me and one daughter who are meat eaters. I've got a vegan. I've got a kind of vegetarian. And then I've got a gluten-free, dairy-free, wow. gluten-free, dairy-free vegan wife. Wow. Oh, That's gonna be so healthy. I'm not making like four dinners. Yeah. Uh -uh. Hey, at least he's sticking your dick in a healthy pussy. That's all I got to say about that. I mean, that's that's a good thing. Is that right? That that's some longevity. Well, there? not nah, longevity. The pussy's gonna last long because you know women that eat everything. You know. Wait, go ahead. Good, good one thought. Women that eat everything. We, we, this is like gospel. Eat everything organic. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just like eat pork, chicken, drink yeah. milk. I, just it's it's a lot. You know. It's, is there a difference? Well, yeah, I think it's a difference in the for, in the coochie yeah, with the um, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. No, no, what, what, yeah, it's going to get fatter, but I'm saying at the same time, like... <laughs> smells bitter? Pea smells better uh, when yeah, she's urine. Don't, eat asparagus. Don't, Don't eat asparagus. Don't eat asparagus. You eat asparagus? Asparagus is not good for you? No, it makes everything smell funny. For real? Really? It makes your pee right, smell funny. Asparagus. Sure. For men and women, like, my cum would be... Oh, God, my cum would like be... I think, I think so. Damn. What is healthy? What should we eat? Yeah. To keep to if I want to like have a healthy baby, I want my baby to have all his toes. Don't come out with three fingers and, and three testicles and what? two dicks. What do I do for this little baby to come out healthy? What three should dicks. I? Eat? I think he would like that, Mike. Three dicks for a truth baby. is I don't I don't think we really know what to believe anymore, right? I mean, yeah. we we both grew up similar generation, and we grew up and they kept saying eat low fat foods, mm -hmm. eat um, stay away from carbohydrates. Yeah, and then it was stay away from sugar. Yeah. And then they came out like a month or two ago and said, actually, higher fat foods are better for you and stay away from the sugar. And it's like, well, which is it? Do you want me staying away from sugar or eating higher fat foods and carbohydrates are okay in certain amounts? I don't think anyone really is telling us the straight scoop. So I just eat in moderation. Yeah, just I feel, eat what the fuck you want to eat, man. Eat what you want, shit what you want to shit. Yeah, I see. I eat. But see, you African guys, you eat everything. Yeah, I eat every fucking thing. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I stopped doing milk, dairy, and I think, you know, that's healthy. For some reason, if you stop drink, drinking milk, for some reason, I think for some reason you're going you're gonna to be more healthy. That's what I heard. From, He's from, I heard that from organic doctors organic and organic, doctor? yeah, organic doctors. Who was the first person to drink the milk? Something comes out of a cow. Let's drink it. Let's try it. Who, who comes up with that? It is true. Um, 
Yeah, no. Huh? Who came up with that idea? Who came up with that know. idea? I want to know who came up with eating goat milk. All that. Who, who's the first one to try it? I mean, I, I guess the same as breast. What? Well, fucking, you, we, or she all drink titty milk, motherfucker? We too grown to be sucking titties. So you got to get milk from somewhere. I can't go like, you know, all of a sudden go squeeze your pregnant wife's titties. Like, so hey, you think that's where it came titties. from? Someone was on someone's titty and they go, we need to get some more milk. And they turn the room and they see a big fat cow and they say, that's the answer. No, I think the, a lady had a fucking baby and she, baby is crying. She put the baby by the titties and t- baby touched something that felt like a fucking nipple. And like, you know, what is this? And they put it in his mouth, all of a sudden milk came out, all of a sudden the fucking cows, everybody got nipples and shit, everybody sucking by their titties. I yeah. think it came from, um, you know, God, God forgive us for this, but I think he was just trying to feed us. Yeah. I just don't think we should drink cow's fucking milk. The right, Virgin Mary. Not cow. There's definitely a lot of controversy over Mike, dairy. I think it's in the Bible. The Virgin Mary started breastfeeding Jesus, baby Jesus. And the whole world started. How can she, bre- she... She's virgin, but she had Jesus. So you think milk came? She think no, so I mean, Jesus she sucked. All the tri- you trying to tell me Jesus sucked titties? I mean, she, he was baby Jesus, of course. Where the fuck is he gonna be? There was no way in the Bible it said, "And I beseech baby Jesus, die shall suck the titties." It's not in the Bible in no scripture. Which version are you talking about? Yeah, I know. It's too. not. It's definitely not the King James version. The African, <laughs> the African Jesus version. I just think. Humans should drink human milk. I really think we should find women should just designate a pregnant women should just be hired to give us milk to as put on cereal. As a doll, yeah. Poor squeeze titties, they get hired. Right. Ten dollars an hour, squeeze right, a so titty. You can start that business. Let me know how it goes. Oh, it's already in the business. Cows should drink cows' milk. Goat eat goat milk. We should not be drinking ma- a fucking ma- cows' the milk. The muscle people drink uh, 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 human milk. No. Yeah, it's a true story. I heard it. On what? My friend. Uh, <laughs> is a f- yeah, what are you reading? Where? What? Yeah, they they buy uh, milk for girls, the pregnant people. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, it's true story, Mikey. Good. Google it. But breast milk is, has he no is fucking the taste. Mike shirt, though, when the last know. time you had breast? <laughs> when the last time you had breast milk on any of you? Yesterday. <laughs> no, I mean probably not. What? Two? <laughs> no, no. I'm just so when you late when last time your wife was pregnant with your last baby, you didn't accidentally suck the milk. No. I what did. do you mean? I actually, no. You didn't suck your wife. You no. You didn't suck your wife's titties while she was pregnant. You, you, you tell I'm me. not milking. <laughs> There's a difference. He's guilty. I see it in his eyes. There's a difference. <laughs> last I wasn't time, thirsty. <laughs> last time my lady was pregnant, I know for a fact I drank some titty milk. Yeah, me too. And it tastes like sour candy. Yeah, your baby's only like really? two years old, man. Tastes sour. You just suck your lady. Your, you drink your baby's food. You fucking asshole. Yeah, I know. That's why he, he had this the formula. formula. Because I drink all the fucking milk. So you were get, getting it on and getting a snack? No, no, no. I mean, I was just, I was curious to what it tastes like. I, it's been so long since I sucked titty when I was a baby. Uh, Africa, I'm not sure how long I, my mother breastfed me for. Because sometimes Africans just forget that you are not a baby anymore. And you three years old and <laughs> bringing a titty to the school for your well, you lunch see, break. You kind of see that. So what? where's the cutoff? Where's the cutoff for breastfeeding? You I think kids, when the milk I mean, stops. can stand up next to their mother in the middle of a mall and be standing and get when some. the milk stops coming that's when you stop you, you suck know, it, 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 it don't can, stop it don't stop if you keep taking it seriously yeah i have nine brothers titties gonna go flat i have nine brothers sisters it never stops she's my mom pregnant every year every night it's what well, she get like a three yeah, months break we're only like a year and a half break yeah like all of even. you are like nine months apart yeah, so my she, brother's a year older than me my other brother is older than her. So they all like just waiting. One's come out, the other one just Your right behind poor it. Your mother's body. Yeah, she's shooting it. It's like a litter. Yeah. So, but you, so it's okay to drink milk. I mean, as I mean, I, you're not a nutritionist. You just a uh, restaurant guy that sell give everybody what the fuck they want to eat, right? You want a goddamn steak with milk on it? You are gonna get it, right? I mean, is that what do you what do you what do you suggest is health? Let's just let me. What do I think is healthy? Yes. Or uh, what's not healthy? Oh, I think, you know, it used to be that the heavier you were, mm-hmm. the more wealthy you were. This ain't right? Africa. That's at the ha- beginning that's of time, it did. the heavier okay. you were, the more right. wealthy you were. That is right? so true. It has completely reversed. It did reverse. The heavier you are now, the the less access you have to quality food. Because wow. America's gotten really good at making 99 cent burgers. That is so true. That are bad for you. So everything's flipped. It's inverse. That is so true. Mm. So... You know, every, and we're the best at processing food, so we can 
for, you know, I think the average, the school lunch program now, they pay schools a dollar nine for school lunches for kids. Mm-hmm. You can't serve a steak or a chicken breast at that, I mean, you gotta process something, so you make a chicken nugget, or you uh, make bologna or hot dogs, right? Processed. The United States of America, we're the best at coming up with this yeah. garbage food that's cheap, highly processed, so I stay away from that. Oh, I yeah, stay away so from the true, processed what you foods. said about the bigger, because Africa, it was like that for a very long time. When I was at home, and I guess a kid back home, the bigger you are, the fatter you are, the more richer, because rich people ate every day. Right. You know, and it started around did nothing because they were successful. Everybody, whatever they had, people worked for them and do everything. So when I came to America, I thought it was the same thing. I was dating all big ass, <laughs> greasy ass bitches, thinking that the fatter they are, the richer they are. And I was like, hey, I see a fat girl. Hey, fat girl, come here. Um, give me a number. I see a skinny girl. Get your broke ass out of here. I thought the skinny bitches was broke and the big women was. You get rich. a lot of free dinner. I thought Oprah was. I thought Oprah was rich. Did she lost she weight? Is. I thought she lost her fucking money. I said this bitch went broke in my very eyes. <laughs> just, but there's truth in that, have, right? Yeah, that is very true. But things have definitely reversed. Is now, it the same now in Africa still? Ah, uh, nah. They they became too Americanized. Y'all fucking fucking up the whole world, man. Y'all you colonizing my fucking Which one? continent. The Chinese? Every America, America but, controls you know, everything. The other problem with food is you go to um, people that go out to get lunch when they work. Back when we were working in offices, right? They go out and get lunch. And if lunch was more than a certain amount of money, they would say, I, I can't do it. So the cheaper the lunch was, the better the lunch was, right? Wow. I had the greatest lunch spot at six bucks. But you know what? It's usually the worst food for you. So cheap became good. You see what I'm saying? And good isn't cheap. So when you go to a steak place and you get a steak that's non messed around with, that's fifty dollars. It's really good food, but it's really expensive. Yeah. Um, so we've got we've, there's definitely a problem in this country in terms of access to high quality food at a reasonable price, and I think that's going to be the big change. Mm. Do we have to well, make our own cow? No, we no motherfucker. You get your own goddamn cow. What? I mean, let's talk about the pandemic and restaurants. Yeah. How is that affecting you guys? Overall. It was hard. I mean, there's never any way you could see this coming. Even though the warnings were there, we had no idea of how deep and how drastic it was going to get. You know, back back in the beginning of March, I was actually with you. We had dinner out here in February, end of February, right before all hell broke loose, right? And um, on March 3rd, I remember the date, and I'll tell you why. They said, if you're over the age of 75, just stay inside and keep yourself away from the general public until this thing blows over. Mm-hmm. It was before phase one, phase two, or phase three. And we went out and said, if anyone knows of anyone that's staying home alone, we'll deliver them a free steak dinner. And we did that 30,000 meals later, wow. just to make sure they got food. Because their, their access to food got cut off. Because yeah. A, if you're 80, you're not good on a smartphone, you're not good on the internet, you're not ordering a delivery service to bring you food, and you're definitely not ordering groceries to be delivered to you. You just don't know how to do it. Um, so it changed my world. Instead of having a restaurant where people came to me to dine, I was bringing, bringing free food to them. Wow, what a nice guy. Right? And then, we had, um, and then we had people ordering for delivery. Well, we're a steak place. So now i got to figure out how to change my whole Damn. food packaging. Because when you leave a restaurant, by, by the way, you know, Asian restaurants have had this perfected for the last 50 years. It's packaged right. But we didn't have that packaging. So we had to figure out how to pack it. So it got to your house and it was hot and you could eat it and it was reasonable and it was good. Because to-go packaging at restaurants were doggy bags until this happened, really. You wanted good food to take home, it was the same food you took leftovers home with. So we had to change all that shit. Make it all look pretty and everything. Yeah. And we had to do it fast or you were dead because people were giving you one opportunity and then if you didn't come through, you are out of business. And I know... Just a shit ton of restaurants that have just completely Shut down. burned down. Yeah, just horrible. That changed. So, so now we got food being delivered all the time instead of customers coming in. I sit in the middle of my restaurant on a Tuesday night and it's empty. There's no one eating in it because they're not allowed to. All the food's going out the door. What am I going to do with my employees? What am I going to do with my staff? So we made the decision early on, me and my business partners, to keep everybody. We kept everybody on payroll. That was very nice, and man. Very form- nice of you. You're feeding everybody. You give everybody their jobs. The smartest thing we did is we formed a nonprofit. That we, were, we then raised money at a nonprofit level to provide those free meals. So that allowed money to come in. Wow. That was tax deductible. So we kept our restaurants moving, kept people fed. 
Wow. And now that we're kind of coming out of it, the nonprofit's kind of got a life of its own. But so now you know. guys are back. You guys are right now. You're currently back open. Twenty-five percent occupancy. God, it sucks. Are you still? Are you still sending food as well? Yeah. Okay. And we talk and we have tents. So, like when we we went to have dinner last night, I'm mm-hmm. in awe of how LA is handled outside dining. It's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You know, back home where we are, we got these big tents with sides and big diesel heaters and and shit because it's snowing and it's twenty degrees and it's cold. But you know, six more weeks we'll get through it. But you know, we get I got vaccinated. Restaurant workers were one B in DC, so we, oh, we, wow. were, we were second group to get Any vaccinated. Any side effects? <laughs> Damn, we fucking mm-hmm. we up fucking podcast host. We probably last on the fucking list to get vaccination. Well, why don't you come work at my restaurant for one night? Then we make yeah. you a restaurant worker. Are you guys hiring, sir? Yeah, you know I'm hiring right now. You mean skills? Yeah, I do. What, what, are, your, uh, what are your skills? I could be a front desk. Welcome to what's your restaurant name? <laughs> let me hear, let me hear you say thanks for calling Medium Rare. Thanks for calling Medium Rare. How may I help you? Hired. What are you going to do? The job? <laughs> I would be the nice security. Nice security. So oh, explain security. to me. Thank you. Because nice security, I could not be there and they would still think I'm there. <laughs> so, so how would you handle a unruly guest? Uh, what, what would you, you mean say? Asking? Unruly <laughs> guest has a little too much to drink in the middle of the mm-hmm. restaurant. How would you handle that? How much you pay me a, a fucking hour, motherfucker? I'm not risking my life for fucking ten dollars an hour. Thirty dollars an hour, I'm gonna probably, you know, I'm ready to fight motherfuckers. The, you know, the less money. How much I would make, it take for you to fight a motherfucker? About thirty, forty, fifty dollars an hour. Which is it? Does it come with pepper spray? <laughs> <laughs> I would pay you fifty. You know what? I'd pay you a thousand dollars for okay. an hour to see you get in a fight with someone if I can video it. We could sell that on YouTube for a lot of That's money. That's right. Cause then I'm cool. Then I get the money back. All right, just one. I'm work. How many? I'm gonna work ten hours that day, motherfucker. It's ten thousand dollars. All right, then I need ten fights. Why well, I gotta fight ten motherfuckers? Can I just fight one fat motherfucker? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. What my blacks and angels? Can Can you come in for one second? I Is there a know, lot of fights? In your I want no. to know, like, come on, both of you come up here. I want have a seat, ladies. I want. Can you? I mean, what do you think they need to eat less of or more of? <laughs> I hope your wife not. You don't look at the blessing angels' ass. Don't worry, Mike. His wife not gonna be looking at this. It's gonna be in Philadelphia TV in the southeast side. Southwest. No Is anyone really gonna watch this? Huh? <laughs> not many people gonna watch. You gonna be divorced after? <laughs> like, what do you suggest? Like less sausage, less eggplants. Less eggplants? Yeah, she's, yeah I hate that too. <laughs> exactly. I, I think it sound like a dick is what she's trying to eat. <laughs> Sausage, eggplant, <laughs> bananas, <laughs> hot dogs, carrots. carrots. <laughs> Extra long hot dogs. <laughs> Y'all have any question for the um for the master he's chef? In a, he, yeah, he's a he, well, he's not a master chef. He just he's a master he don't chef, cook Mike. anymore. He just brought the restaurants. Now he took the easy way out. After, <laughs> okay, he just take trips and go taste the food and just lay people off. I cook for you. <laughs> I'll cook for you. Can you cook? Can you, hi, okay. Can you cook fufu? No. Exactly, can't, motherfucker. But you, you can't can. cook for me. Mm-hmm. So you cook for me, bitch. I got you. <laughs> Mr. Big Talker. I'll cook for you. You better eat my shit too, motherfucker. Get some cow tongue, fish eyes. I want fish you know eyes. I got a new show for you. We're going to call it Hell No Kitchen. That's a good idea. Hell No Kitchen. <laughs> and you're cooking. <laughs> Hell No. Hell No Kitchen by Michael Black. Yeah. <laughs> Hell No. Here's my fish eyes. Hell No. <laughs> What's up, Marasokas? This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. Stop what you are doing right now and go find the Marasoka podcast with me, Michael Blackson, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe. It's free. So go do it right now. And don't forget to catch a new episode every Tuesday.